space. My name is Ben Reeds and I have moved again. So I am now in a different location and this place is really nice and I'm really happy here. So I'm hoping you guys enjoy the new location. There's going to be more of a fish background now. But today we're pretty much just talking about my favorite books of 2021, uh, which I've been really excited to make. So I'm really glad that I get to make this video for you. So I'm going to be doing like my favorite books in order of categories. Um, I've kind of organized the books that I've loved this year into categories so I can talk about them more specifically rather than be like, here's 20 books and why I love them for various different reasons. So the first one is going to be fantasy, which is a given, sci-fi, horror, mystery, and then there is going to be trash, love the trash novels, and then I think that'll be it. I don't think I'll need to list off anything other than that. I might do some honorable mentions though, because there are a lot of books this year that I really liked. So yeah, let's get into it. We have the entire Akatar series. Um, I had only read these for the first time this year, and I thought they were really good. I liked the first book. I didn't love it, um, but I really, really enjoyed A Court in Mist and Fury and Winds of River was all right too. And then I, I don't have a copy of it, but A Court of Silver Flames, I was a fan of. <laughs> I, I understand why a lot of people didn't like it, but for me, I it's it hits that trash spot that I really enjoy. So it worked out. But basically, a court of uh, rose, a court of thorn and roses follows a girl named Feyre. She's given to a guy named Tamlin, and some other stuff happens. She ends up in a bunch of the different kingdoms in the Fey realm, and yeah, it was just a really interesting book series. I am a sucker for Sarah J. Maas books, so I wasn't surprised that I liked it. I can definitely understand why other people don't. But yeah, I really enjoyed it and I thought it was really fun, so. So for the next category, we're looking at sci-fi and my favorite sci-fi book of the year would have been the Red Rising series, the entire series, the entire first trilogy. I haven't read past the third book yet, but goddamn, this series is really good. And if you haven't read it, I highly suggest it. It is a very, very well done book series and it's just, chef's kiss. So basically Red Rising follows a man named Darrow who is born into a color class system that basically the color you're born as decides how your life is going to go and where you belong in society. And so Red Rising is about his class, Red, kind of rising out of that. Um, the first book is very kind of Hunger Games style. Um, I found the first book to be the weakest in the three books that I've read but it was still really good. It kept my interest. So obviously I have read the entire series now and I can say that all of them are really good, especially the deeper you get into it. Um, I think the exploration of characters is really well done and the explor exploration of like trauma and how that kind of situation would affect a person is also really well done. So I highly, highly suggest Red Rising series if you haven't read it. I'd be surprised if you haven't because I know a lot of people have and I know 
I'm late to the game on this one, so. So in the category of horror, I actually have two books that are tied for my favorite horror books of 2021. Uh, the first one being The Troop by Nick Cutter. Uh, this book is fantastic. It is horrifying and I highly suggest it if you don't mind body horror or any of the terrible, terrible things that happen in this book. Um, it's now an inside joke between me and all my friends. <laughs> it just opened to a random page and it was already gross. But, so there's The Troop, and then there's Misery by Stephen King, which I also read this year and really, really enjoyed. So if you haven't read Misery by Stephen King, I also highly suggest it. I think it's my favorite book by him at the moment. I don't know why I love it so much. I've read a few of his other books and none of them gave me the same reaction this one did. I think it was just kind of like the psychology of it. But if you don't know, I guess I should keep this in my hand. If you don't know the story of Misery, it is about an author who gets into a car crash and is rescued by a woman who is a fan of his book. And when she finds out that he kills or does something to her favorite character at the end of the book, she basically holds him hostage in her house and forces him to rewrite the book. And yeah, it's a really, really interesting, dark story. Um, I do highly suggest it. it. It's not that long of a read, but it's definitely worth the time. Like it's very, very good. I think this was the first book that I actually annotated that wasn't for school. Um, yeah, you can see like my annotations here. This is before I had started using sticky tabs to start talking about stuff. Like you can see, I'm reading the Game of Thrones or Song of Ice and Fire series right now. And you can see that I've started using sticky tabs a lot more. But anyways, so the troop is about a troop of young boys who end up on a deserted island and they are just kind of they're there on like kind of a boy scouts mission and they're just basically there with their camp counselor when an unknown contagion gets on the island via a man who gets onto the island <laughs> and they try and help him and basically they get infected by this contagion and horrible horrible things ensue I am not kidding, if you, if you can't handle body horror or anything bad happening to someone's body, anything about like sickness or delusions, I'd say skip this one. Anything to do with insects, and if you're reading it, uh, do not eat pasta, do not eat Mr. Noodles, do not eat spaghetti. Just avoid all pasta while you're reading it, because you will never want to eat pasta again once you've once you've read this monster. Anyways, it's amazing though. I gave it, like, I think I gave it a 5 out of 5. I might have given it a 4 out of 5 for some character issues, but it is really, really good. So I highly suggest it. Terrify yourselves. So now for my favorite mystery of the year. I don't own a physical copy of this book, but it would have definitely been Pretty Girls by Karen Slaughter. Um, again, if you are interested in reading this book, I would go into it with being very aware of the content, maybe doing some research on it, because this book focus hev focuses heavily on like sexual violence and violence towards women and violence towards young women. So if you are interested in this book, I would highly suggest that you look, at, look up the trigger warnings first because it is really intense. I didn't find it as graphic as some other people had described it, but it was pretty intense. So. Just keep that in mind when you're going into reading this book. But anyways, it is really good. Um, so basically, Pretty Girls follows a woman whose husband has just died and she is grieving heavily and looking through her house and she's finding some weird stuff on his computer and in his office that basically points to the fact that he might have made snuff films. And it follows her perspective on that but I think it's her sister who is the other woman in the story. I read it at the beginning of 2021, but it also follows her perspective where she sees 
the husband from a completely different view than the wife does. She sees the husband for what he was, which is a jerk and a terrible person. And so we get these two women's perspective on the same man and watch them kind of figure everything out together. And it was very, very interesting. And I highly suggest it. Lastly, we will now get into our trash category, which is probably my favorite category. And I am going to again um, make a tie between Court of Silver Flames by Sarah J. Maas and Neon Gods, which was both books are just absolute trash in a way that I love them. And they are perfection to me. And I I don't have physical copies of either of these books, so I can't like hold them up and show you, but I really like the cover on both these books. I wish A Court of Silver Flames had a different color scheme. I really don't like how the cover looks for color wise. I think it's kind of ugly, but like the visual is very nice. Um, so anyways, A Court of Silver Flames is again in the Akatar series and it focuses on the sister Nesta as she deals with the trauma of being becoming a fae and spoilers but she's basically dealing with that trauma and with her own grief and everything that she's feeling inside and it also leads her to find herself in bed with one of the brothers of resand resand risand and stuff ensues and it was cringy at moments, but goddamn, it was also really good. So I suggest that if you are a fan of Sarah J. Maas, if you're not, you're not gonna like this. Like, I, <laughs> if you don't like Sarah J. Maas, I cannot see you liking this book in any way. But Neon Gods is a Hades and Persephone recreation where basically Persephone runs away from Zeus, who is in her intended husband, and ends up on the opposite side of the river because Olympus is basically a town. It's not a, these aren't gods, they're figureheads for different parts of town. I didn't really understand the world building, but I wasn't there for that. So Persephone runs into Hades' side of town and meets him and eventually she barters a deal with him where she's gonna stay with him until a certain time and while they're staying together it kind of goes from an enemy's lover sort of situation with a whole lot of stuff if you don't know anything about this book again i highly suggest looking up the content warnings because geez but anyways it is a really good book um i really enjoyed it it was steamy it was fun what else could you want in a trash novel? So, <laughs> and that will do it for my favorites of 2021. I read a lot more books than I actually thought I would in 2021 and I'm already off to a good start this year. Um, I read 52 books, which was very impressive for me. I haven't read, ever read that many books actually. I, yeah, the year before I read Getting the Ninth, Crescent City and Witches of Ash and Ruin. So going from three, three, three to five books to 52 was a really big accomplishment for me. And I'm hoping to bring that up even more this year, but I'm also only reading to enjoy. I'm not reading to push myself through. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you guys have a great start to 2022 and stay safe. Bye.